In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a new score, add instrument staffs, change the time and key signatures, edit the titles and define a tempo. We'll also look at changing the bar numbers, the bar line styles and renaming instruments. Uh, let's jump in. It's easy to create a new score in Staffpad. Just tap the new score button from the home screen. Since this is a blank score, we'll see placeholder text already on the canvas and we can tap this to bring up the staffs page. We can also get back to this screen at any time by tapping the chevron in the top left and then the violin icon. The staffs page shows you a list of all of the instruments currently installed in Staffpad with the instrument categories on the left column, instruments within that category in the middle column, and any existing staffs in your score show up in this right hand column. The app comes with over 60 built-in instruments which all have detailed playback samples behind them, but you can expand and upgrade this list by getting additional instruments from the in-app store. Now the store has some amazing sample libraries from some of the world's best sample developers. And these huge libraries have been reprogrammed specifically for Staffpad. You can get professional quality mock-ups of your score out of these libraries. Anything you've purchased shows up right here in their own categories, ready to use as instrument staffs. So I can choose an instrument in the middle column and then tap add to move it into the score. As I add instruments, you'll notice that it's adding them in a conventional orchestral score order. But I can change this order at any time by choosing the instrument in the score column and then dragging it up or down with my finger to change its place. On Windows, we have icons for this. You tap the move up or move down icons to change the position. You can also remove any staffs you don't want and even swap them for another instrument. This is most useful when you have music in the score and want to swap the instrument staff from one instrument to another without losing any of that music. The instrument list can get quite big, so we added a search feature. Just tap the search box and start typing to filter the list. I'll add some symbols and press OK. To change the title of the score, I simply tap on it once. I can edit or enter a new title with the keyboard. If I press the Enter key, the cursor will move down to a subtitle line. The same is true of the composer credit. I tap once to edit it, and if I press the enter key, the cursor moves down and you can add an arranger or a lyricist or whatever you like. You don't have to do this, pressing enter again without typing anything will skip this. To change the time signature, we use a context menu. Context menus change their options depending on where you trigger them. And in this case, we want to change the time signature from the beginning of the score. So I'll long press with my finger on the first bar of the score and choose change time signature. I can choose from any of the presets or even enter my own custom signature using the numpad. For now, I'll choose one of the presets. Let's go for three, four. I can also change the key signature the same way. Long press, choose change key signature. And you can see we have major and minor keys. I'll choose D major. Now let's add a tempo. To do this, we use text. Now since we're setting up the score, I want to add a tempo at the beginning of the piece. So again, I'll long press above the first bar and choose insert text. Staffpad uses this context to work out which kind of text you might want to enter. In this case, I just write a number, say 156, and Staffpad knows that I'm likely to be writing a tempo. You'll see Staffpad presents me with some additional options for values. If I just press enter, it'll choose the first one in the list. In this case, crotchet equals 156. You might want to change the instrument names on the score. To do this, just tap the instrument name and the edit staff control appears. From here, I can change the full name, which is displayed at the start of the score on page one, and the short name, which is the abbreviation shown on subsequent pages and in the ghost staff. Remember, the ghost staff is this gray representation that shows up once you've scrolled past the beginning of the piece. Finally, we may want to change the bar numbering. Oftentimes, scores, especially in movies, don't start at bar one. We can adjust the bar numbers by simply long pressing on the bar ruler and choosing a new bar number with the numpad. I'll start this score at bar zero. You can, of course, change the bar number at any position within the score and the bars will be renumbered for you. One last thing, we might want to change the bar line style at bar one so that it's clear that we're starting to write from here. I'll long press on the bar line and you'll see we get the option to change it. I'll choose a double bar line. Once you're happy with the score layout, of course you can start writing, but if you want to reuse this layout in the future, you can save this as a template. To do that, 
choose export and then choose save as template. We can give it a name and assign it a category. And this template now shows up on our home screen under the templates tab. Okay, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video.